What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, a friend Tinoco, again, coming at you from North Memphis slash Valentine Evergreen um, in just north of Midtown Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, so what's up to uh, all of you uh, open-minded people, uh, people who adventure in the life of the mind all over the United States and the world over, not just my peeps here in the 901. Um I'm here in my comfortable throne so I can use my outdoor voice when necessary. Um, and um, I wanted to share some reflections to y'all with y'all about uh, the recent uh, verdict uh, and the significance, perhaps impact, but mostly the significance of the verdict when the case of Derek Chauvin. Um, before I get to that, I'll tell a, a, a related story. I promise I'll relate it. Um, my grandpa on my father's side, uh, back in that old um, mid-sized uh, uh, declining steel town where, uh, where my parents grew up, um, had a, uh, a little rat terrier called Maravilla. We called her Maravilla. Um, not just because it's a wonderful dog, but it was, she was a freak of nature. So Maravilla was a, a good name for her. Um, but a very, uh, very skittish, like a chihuahua and, uh, strong, like a much larger dog and, and aggressive, like a pit bull for sure. I'm glad I didn't have a head and jaws of a, of a pit bull. Otherwise, uh, you've gotten all, the whole lot of us in trouble. But uh, my my, uh, it, my grandpa had it uh, in the last years of his life, and we brought it over to Memphis. So in 81, 82, 83 or so, we had a little dog, a little rat terry dog. Mind you, the little dog had not, uh, was uh, basically came into this world in... Um, back roads northern mexico okay so the only the only uh kind of people she saw were mexicans people of various shades of my skin and darker had never seen a black person before so brought her to memphis and of course walking up and down the block uh, could see <laughs> on any given day a black dude or black child, a black woman and family or whatever, uh, walking up and down my street back off of Summer Avenue, uh, off of Graham. And her reaction was to go absolutely ape shit, just barking bloody murder. Of course, I don't know what. Uh, I don't speak rat terrier, so I don't know what she was trying to convey to these people. But um, unfortunately, my pooch would always, uh, uh, would almost always, when she were to escape uh, our gate, and in one of these fits of anger, would go and actually bite people. Had to be locked up in a in a vet's place for. Uh, a week one time for biting my neighbor but um yeah didn't know how to react to black people so if i would have had such a dog today i would call it probably derek chauvin i'll probably talk about that dog derek chauvin and why do i say this well let me tell you something that is very known to the people who were directly affected and who know Derek Chauvin and uh, George Floyd directly. There is a salsa community in, uh, in Minneapolis. They gathered at this club that is, I believe, no longer operational. Um, so... Derek Chauvin worked security at this club. 
The head of security of this club was George Floyd. George Floyd and Derek Chauvin were work associates. Okay. Derek Chauvin and George Floyd knew each other. Derek Chauvin knew the man who he killed. Well, it was known among the people who were patrons of this club where they worked security that Derek would be, whenever there was a black patron at the Salsa Club, which, if it's anything like the Rumba Room, um, you know, there's a smattering of black dancers there, black, black patrons. People come and drink and or dance but most of them are any other ethnic persuasion because that's the kind of crowd that uh, salsa attracts. White, black, Asian, Caribbean, uh, Hispanic, of course, um, and all combinations thereof. So, Derek Chauvin was convict. Okay, first of all, I'm sorry. Derek Chauvin would go like my dog. Derek Chauvin would go ape shit whenever there was a uh, a patron, a black patron, a new one, maybe especially an unknown one. Uh, they would be on alert, on edge, maybe hand on gun or whatever, uh, but very focused and creeping them out. This isn't my words. These are the words of the people who knew them both. So, like my... Uh, like my little dog, who had never seen a black person before, Derek Chauvin, who I imagine had seen a lot of black people over the course of his uh, life as a field training officer of the Minneapolis Police Department... And so he was always very suspicious of these people. Must have been rather uncomfortable for him to <laughs> work under one, for sure, at this club. Okay. Derek Chauvin was... Um, was charged with offenses appropriate, like second and third degree homicide and manslaughter uh, appropriate for people who um, did not know personally these folks and or did not premeditate um, the killing of another. Which might not be here, neither here nor there because he was found guilty and will have to spend um, even chance, you know, 50, 50, the rest of his life in jail, depending on how the judge will, um, will rule. I'm sorry. will uh, will sentence him. The jury ruled the judge sentences. Okay. So, um, what was not on the table this time? perhaps to the credit as a, as a strategy by uh, District Attorney um, or Attorney General uh, Keith Ellison. What was, not on the, uh, what, what was not brought forth was murder one. Murder one, first degree murder, um, would have opened up the possibility of in it just itself life in prison murder one also has a harder test murder one is uh, a higher test for a jury that may sympathize to a certain degree with Derek Chauvin like many of the people of the United States especially who are Caucasian may sympathize with the uh, thin blue line and discredit any 
uh, aggression or um, lethal violence towards people of color on behalf, you know, just say, oh, he was a criminal or they were a criminal. What were they doing at that hour of the day? Oh, they shouldn't have been waving a toy. That child should not have been waving a toy gun, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We know those types of people. And so it would have been, if uh, there was a single one of those in the jury, it would have been tough, a little tougher to, um, to bring murder one charges with a jury against uh, Derek Chauvin. So now we have a possibility of appeal. <laughs> but guess what? If um, Officer Chauvin were to appeal um, his ruling and sentence, uh, the murder one situation can be put into play. Because why was it that, you know, it was Derek Chauvin who sh was able to show up on the scene um, as a result of supposedly passing a $20 bill when George Floyd was a fully employed man between his uh, security guard duties in the Salvation Army and this salsa club, this, this, uh, you know, this dance club in Minneapolis. So anyhow, so that's, uh, that's something for people to think about. Well done, attorney Ellison. Well done. I have another video, uh, later I'm going to put up about this that is going to I want to discuss the macro um, of uh, of this ruling, but uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to make these uh, videos more brief. But anyway, yes, Derek Chauvin, take your sentence and live out the rest of your life the way uh, you would. If you were not prejudiced as you were, even though it has to be in jail, because if not, things would get worse, even worse for you. That bullet is still left in the chamber, and I'm sure Attorney Ellison is not, or General Ellison is not, um, uh, unwilling to fire that bullet your way. Okay, so this is my reflection, one of two, of the verdict of. Derek Chauvin versus uh, George Floyd. Signing off. Bye.